Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at counting, excluding a specific item. So we want to count how many items of fruit are in this list, excluding apples. And to do this, I'm going to use the count if function. I've got a single criteria, so I'm going to use count if. Count if has two arguments, range and then criteria. So range is where you're counting my list of fruits. My criteria is going to be not equal to apples. Now not equal to is the less than and greater than comparison operators together without any space between them. So I want to say not equal to the value in D2. Now if I close the bracket and press enter, Excel doesn't seem to like my formula. But the first thing to know is that if you're using a comparison operator within the COUNTIF function, you must enclose it within quotation marks. Now let's see if it works. Still doesn't work. So the next step is to join or concatenate our comparison operator with the cell reference. And we do that using the ampersand symbol. Now if I press enter, I get 13. So 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's the right answer. There are a couple of other ways of performing this formula. And the difference between them is the way in which we express our criteria. You could hard code your criteria directly within the formula rather than refer it to a cell address. And to do that, what I would do is get rid of that cell address reference and within the quotation marks, put my criteria in, so not equal to apples. That gives me the correct answer. The other way we could do it is to put the comparison operator within the cell itself, not equal to apples. And then I would just need to refer to that cell and that would also work. So all those methods work if there's a single criteria. So let's move on to the next sheet, and here I want to exclude three criteria, and this will work with however many items or criteria you want to exclude. Now, one way of doing this is with the count ifs function, the plural version. And the first argument is criteria range one, so that's where I'm looking to count. And the criteria in the first instance would be not equal to apples. Then criteria range two is the same range as before. And the criteria for that is not equal to ampersand Kiwi. And then I do it again. Same range, criteria range. And then the criteria is not equal to ampersand pairs. If I press enter, I get nine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I want to look at another way of performing this calculation. And um, this method starts with the match function. And what match does is return the position of a value within a range of values. So what I want to do is find the position of these values within the list of excluded items. Now, ultimately, we're not looking for the position, but you'll see how this goes. So my lookup value is all these values here, and the lookup array is where I'm looking, so that's in the list of excluded items. And then the last argument asks for a match type, and we want an exact match for this, zero. Close the bracket, press enter. Now, I'm in Excel 365, so I get a spilled array of results. In earlier versions, to see those results, what you can do is select your match function, press F9 on your keyboard, and you'll see you get the same results. I'll just undo that, Control Z. But if you look at this spilled array of results, you can see that wherever an item is not found, so for example, grapes is not found in my excluded list, I get an NA. So those are the ones that I'm interested in. I want to count these NAs. So how do I do that? Well. First of all, I need to convert the NAs to ones and the numbers to zeros. And an easy way of doing that is to use the isNA function. And so I'm surrounding the whole of the match function within the isNA function. And that gives me 
true and false results. Again, if you're in earlier versions of Excel, to see those true and false results, select your formula, press F9, Control Z to undo those results. So to convert the trues to ones and the falses to zeros, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but the way I'm gonna do it is say plus zero at the end. And now I get my zeros and ones. Again, you're not gonna see that if you're not in Excel 365, so use the F9 trick. And now I want to add up those values. Now, if you're in Excel 365, really easy, just use sum, to add them up. That will give me my nine. But in earlier versions, some won't cope with that array of values, but some product will. And this will work in any version of Excel using some product. Gives me the same result as using countifs. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.